Good evening. It's Monday, the 8th of September. You're tuned in to our 10 p.m. newscast coming to you from Adi Lang's news centre in Seoul. It's very good to have you with us on this Chuseok or Korean Thanksgiving Day. I'm Mark Broom. Now, today is the actual day of Chuseok here in Korea, and traffic is fairly heavy on the nation's expressways as millions of Koreans are beginning to head back to Seoul from their hometowns where they saw their families and paid respect to their ancestors. The Korea Expressway Corporation says northbound lanes back to the capital are pretty busy even at this relatively late hour. You can see the video there. The estimated travel time from the southern port city of Busan to Seoul, if you were to leave now, is five hours. From Gwangju, it will take just under five hours. From Daegu, four hours and ten minutes. And from Gangneung on the east coast, you'll be back home in around two and a half hours. During the Chuseok holiday, which... Wraps up on Wednesday, nearly 40 million Koreans were forecast to travel nationwide, be it by car, train or plane. That's up more than 13% from last year. Now, Chuseok is one of the two times of the year in Korea where families have a few days off to spend time with one another. And one of the key traditions of Chuseok is, like I said, paying respect to your ancestors. And in Korea, this is done by setting out a ritual table topped with some really rather delicious fresh food. Our Kim Yun bin shows us how it looks. Chuseok is a day to pay respect to one's ancestors. To do that properly, families need to set up a table as part of ancestral rites. During the service, family members pay tribute in front of the ceremonial table. There are 21 different types of food and fruits placed on the table, but they all have a certain position. The jujube on the far left of the table has one seed representing past kings from the Joseon dynasty. Next are chestnuts. The three nuts, once encased in the same spiky shell, represent the top three ministers during the dynasty. Pears have eight seeds representing eight provincial governors in charge of the provinces. Lastly, there's an apple. And since it contains numerous seeds, it symbolizes the people. Chuseok also means families can enjoy time together and share the bounties of a good harvest. It's also a time when many people find themselves overdoing it and piling on the pounds. Koreans chow down on songpyeon, or half-moon-shaped rice cake, and chapche, traditional stir-fry glass noodles and vegetables. A traditional Chuseok feast consists of numerous delicacies and side dishes from kimchi to skewer meats. But don't let the smaller portions fool you. It can quickly add up to an average of 1,300 calories per serving. That's nearly two-thirds the daily recommended intake for a woman. So it's best to take it easy, or at least take a brisk walk afterwards. Kim Young bin Arirang News. Now, as well as the food that is on offer, the Chuseok break is an opportunity to enjoy cultural activities and folk games that are only available during this festive season. Our Jim Young Gil has more. The Korea Tourism Organization in downtown Seoul is offering various festivities to help visitors discover the city's traditional site and experience Korean culture. Various folk games such as the Kangang Sule are played on Chuseok to celebrate the coming of autumn and a rich harvest. The Kangang Sule is a traditional folk dance performed exclusively by women under the full moon on the night of Chuseok to bring a bountiful harvest for the year. Women dressed in hanbok, the traditional Korean dress, join hands and sing a song while they dance around in a circle. It was interesting, our first uh, time coming all the way from Nishi, experiencing the Korean culture itself. And to do the dancing is very interesting and exciting. Visitors can enjoy plenty of fun folk games that are played around the holiday, such as tuho, arrow throwing, originally an exercise to help warriors hone their skills. Well, it was rather difficult for me because it was the first time I did it. At the end, I could uh, throw two arrows in the hole. In another corner of the hall, tourists are learning to play a traditional board game called yunnori and tegichagi, which is similar to kicking a hacky sack, as well as pengichigi or top spinning. 
Yeah, it's quite far. And then uh, it kind of reminds me of my childhood. We have a similar kind of game like this one in Taiwan. I'm quite enjoy it, actually. Although Chuseok can be a lonely time for international residents, they can use the holiday period as an opportunity to gain a better understanding of Korea's rich culture. All programs are free and open to the public on a first-come, first-served basis through September 9th. Jim young -gil. Arirang News. Now, in the rest of the day's news, South Korea is calling for special measures to fundamentally resolve the issue of families divided by the Korean War. In a speech for war-separated families earlier on this Monday, Unification Minister Ryu Kil Jae said extraordinary measures were needed, and he urged Pyongyang to answer Seoul's recent proposal for high-level inter-Korean talks on family reunions and other related issues. The minister said efforts needed to be speeded up as thousands of people on both sides of the border are passing away without a chance to reunite with their families one last time. Almost half of the South Koreans who applied to reunite with their relatives in the north have died before seeing their loved ones. The United States is once again calling on North Korea to release three American citizens detained in the communist nation. U.S. State Department spokesperson Jen Psaki told South Korea's Yonhap news agency that out of humanitarian concerns for the three men and also their families, the U.S. is requesting Pyongyang release them and let them come back home. The comments came after North Korean state TV reported that the North Supreme Court was going to judge one of the detainees, Matthew Todd Miller, on September 14th. Mr. Miller is charged with tearing up his tourist visa and seeking asylum upon entering North Korea back in April. The two other Americans held in the North are Jeffrey Edward Fowle and Kenneth Bay. In economic news, domestic consumption has been in the doldrums since the Seoul Ho Ferry disaster in April and the aftermath of the tragedy is still affecting the economy nearly five months after it happened. That said, the Bank of Korea says Korean spending overseas increased 9.7% in the second quarter compared to the first three months of the year. That's the biggest quarterly jump since the first half of 2012. Central bank officials attribute the spike in overseas consumption to the increasing number of Koreans taking their vacations outside of Korea. The United States has carried out more airstrikes on Islamic State militants near a strategically important dam at the request of the Iraqi government. On the diplomatic front, U.S. President Barack Obama will lay out his strategy this week to tackle the radical militants, but he has stressed the U.S. is not going to wage another war in Iraq. Al Connie Kim reports. The United States has begun launching airstrikes around a key dam in Iraq as Washington steps up its aerial bombardment of key Islamic State positions. Upon the Iraqi government's request for support near the Haditha Dam, officials say the strikes helped Iraqi forces launch a ground offensive that destroyed Islamic State vehicles and forced the militants to retreat. This is the first time the U.S. has attacked ISIS positions in Iraq's Anbar region. Uh, they too, the Iraqi Security Force, Air Force, is conducting uh, strikes. Haditha Dam is a critically important facility uh, for uh, Iraq. Uh, it is, I think, the second largest hydroelectric dam uh, in Iraq. U.S. President Barack Obama will lay out Washington's game plan to defeat the terrorist group this week. In an interview with NBC on Sunday, Obama said he will give a speech outlining his tactics on Wednesday after first meeting with congressional leaders from both parties at the White House on Tuesday. The president stressed that his plans will not involve U.S. boots on the ground in Iraq or Syria. This is not going to be an announcement about U.S. ground troops. This is not the equivalent of uh, the Iraq war. Senior administration officials have told the New York Times that they think it'll take as long as three years to destroy Islamic State in Iraq and their strongholds in Syria. President Obama is now back in Washington following a NATO summit in Wales, where leaders saw eye to eye on the need to destroy Islamic State. Connie Kim, Arirang News. Now to the other crisis gripping the world, and there's been renewed fighting in eastern Ukraine. U Ukrainian forces have been coming under artillery and gunfire 
in what is the first serious test to a very shaky ceasefire. Uh, Huang Jie has the details. Smoke lingers in the air above the rebel-held eastern Ukrainian city of Donetsk while citizens frantically search for shelter. Some residents of this war-torn city blame the country's president as a ceasefire agreement with the pro-Russian separatists only came into force two days ago. Petro Poroshenko should be here, for him to be here with his children, just as people walk with their children here. The disabled, the elderly, what terrorists can be here? Fighting broke out to the north of Donetsk after shelling resumed on Saturday near the port of Mariupol. The peace plan that was signed on Friday by Ukrainian envoys and Russian-backed rebels is aimed at ending the five-month conflict that has already killed almost 3,000 people. While both sides claim the other violated the ceasefire, Amnesty International has condemned all parties. It accuses them of endangering the lives of civilians and violating their international obligations. NATO, meanwhile, will provide weapons and military advisors to boost its defenses in Eastern Europe in response to the Ukraine crisis. The move looks sure to up tensions in the sharpest confrontation between Russia and the West since the end of the Cold War. Hong Jie, Arirang News. Now to the latest on the Ebola crisis, and we may have some positive news. As scientists say vaccinated monkeys have developed long-term immunity to the virus. This is good because it significantly raises the prospect of successful uh, trials in human beings. Researchers at the U.S. National Institutes of Health say their experiments showed that this immunity could last at least 10 months. Meanwhile, in an interview with an American news network on Sunday, U.S. President Barack Obama said the U.S. military would help in the fight against Ebola in Africa. He says U.S. military assets will set up isolation units and equipment to provide security for public health workers from around the world who are pouring into West Africa to help. Well, that's all we have for now. Do enjoy the rest of your Monday and stay tuned to Arirang TV. A very happy Chusak as well to all our Korean viewers. And uh, please enjoy the rest of your extended break if you are watching us in Korea. Goodbye.